Hey, what's up, y'all? Um, still the middle of the off season, but the uh, burnout is slowly starting to fade away, which is good. And so I was recently rewatching um, some of the finals of the World Games between the U.S. and Australia, and I thought a cool concept for a video would be pointing out some of the little things that uh, the best players do that the average viewer might not notice when watching it live. So. In this video, I'm going to focus on a few little things that I noticed that everyone can hopefully learn from and add to their game and get a little bit better. So I hope you enjoy as always, and thanks for watching. So we'll start this video out in the first point of the game. And right here, I want you to watch this move that Finney uses to get open underneath. So Finney had just made a deep cut as the disc was swinging and her defender recognized that she was too deep and correctly fronted her by a few steps. As Finney begins to come back under, she gives a little head fake as if she's going deep again. She does this right before she takes her first big committed step under. This little fake does just enough for the defender to bite just a little bit, and Finney is able to win the advantage on the under a couple steps later. And this is a move that I've seen a lot of elite players make, and I'm definitely going to add it to my bag. John Randolph in particular is really good at this move, and he's got me a couple times with this. And just a few moments later in the same clip, this example does a really good job of showing when the cutters in the stack decide to stop making cuts and instead focus on clearing deep and giving room for the handlers to catch up and get into position to dump and swing the disc. I oftentimes see players in this position make a move to go get the disc when they really just don't have enough room. Just because you're in the back of the stack doesn't necessarily mean you should cut for the disc. If you find yourself in this position, usually the best thing you can do is push further downfield and anticipate the rhythm of the play to pause and switch sides of the field. This next example is a small thing that can go a long way in terms of preventing an unnecessary turnover. So right here, this is me tapping the disc into play after a stoppage. And this part of the field is a particularly difficult spot to generate anything off of a stop disc. There isn't really enough vertical space for the defenders to have to worry about any sort of deep shot. And on a stoppage, defenders can lock in and they have enough time to realize that they should really only worry about an under on the disc side. A lot of times players will tap in the disc and go through their normal progressions, but what I like to do is focus on getting this disc off the sideline as quickly as possible. These dead disc situations in this part of the field can often benefit the defense much more than the offense. So the quicker you can get the disc moving, the quicker you gain back the advantage as the offense. This clip does a really good job of showing Chris Kotcher playing excellent handler defense. So notice which foot Chris uses as his defensive pivot foot. Having a defensive pivot foot allows you to not over pursue on a quick juke or shoulder fake. He simply opens up his hips and is ready for the offense to counter their initial juke. Oftentimes defenders will over pursue this first jab by the handler by stepping over with their right foot and committing their hips completely. By opening up his hips and not over pursuing, Chris is ready for the counter move by the offensive player. On this counter move, Chris again doesn't step over with his left foot, but instead shuffles his feet to avoid over committing his hips. This is really awesome defensive technical footwork. Here's a really good example of how to recognize and counter the defense overloading the strong side. So with the disc on the sideline here, Australia decides to overload that side of the field to shrink the amount of space that the cutters have to work with. You can see that Nate Goff's defender is the one really cheating over into that lane. As the thrower, I recognize this, and once I dump the disc, I'm calling to swing the disc quickly so that we can punish Nate's defender. Here, Nate could have probably taken more advantage by cutting more horizontal instead of straight back to the disc to get more yards. Later in the same point, you can see Dylan recognize the same thing here, as my defender is poaching off me and I get more yards on the swing. In this clip, you can see a move that I use all the time when the mark is playing too aggressively. If someone marks you by straddling your pivot foot like this, the around is usually available every time with the free foul call. If you feel like you are not able to pivot without getting contact from the defender, that's a foul every time and something that you can use to your advantage. 
I love when people mark me like this because it gives me a free foul every time as long as I'm in my throwing motion during my pivot. The same thing happens again here, and I feel an opening where I can release the disc and try to pivot to that point as fast as possible. Generally, one of the biggest differences that I see at the higher levels of play is how patient the offensive players are. In my opinion, ultimate is much more about timing and spacing than it is just about pure speed and quickness. Notice here how Trope waits a beat to make her cut to ensure that she has enough space to run into to get the disc. She sees the disc swinging the whole time, but stays patient and realizes that her defender has to stay close and wait for her to make a move. Once Finney catches the disc, Trope then decides to make her move, and she has left Finney enough time and space to fit her throw. I often see players make this cut too early because they think they have to be faster than the defense, but usually waiting an extra second or two combined with a quick first step is much more valuable and it makes it easier for the thrower to hit you. This is also a really nice shimmy and throw by Finney. Finney is really good at catching the disc and using these dynamic shoulder fakes to open up her throws. And here's another one. She opens up her shoulders and makes the mark over pursue to the open side, leaving the break throw wide open. This last clip is a great example of Australia running an excellent pool play. In the first half, Australia used this same play of isolating Cat Phillips for an undercut. Kayla Helton came really close to getting a block on both plays and was ready for them to run it again. But instead, this time, the cutter fakes under and makes a move deep. This is just a really great example of anticipating what your defender thinks you're going to do and making a counter move. This is especially effective if you have an eager defender who is hunting for a block. These are just a handful of things that I noticed in this game, but hopefully it was able to show some of the little things that the average viewer might not notice when watching the game live. There is a lot of nuance in the game of Ultimate, and it's fun to share some of the tips that I find especially valuable. As always, thanks for watching, and let me know if you enjoyed the video. Thanks, friends.